Some of the best vehicles on the market are designed with a specific purpose in mind. A Chevrolet Camaro Z-28 can outrun some supercars on a road racing course. A Jeep Wrangler Rubicon can conquer off-road obstacles that would defeat most other vehicles. A Kenworth W900 can rack up millions of miles dragging 40 tons of payload across interstates for months on end. A Ford Transit van can be outfitted to comfortably haul everything from a dozen people to thousands of matchbox models of itself. Similarly, the Mobility Ventures MV1 is dedicated to one purpose, at which it excels. As the only purpose-built wheelchair-accessible vehicle on the market today, it is extremely valuable to its users. Other wheelchair-accessible light-duty vehicles are typically minivans or vans heavily modified by aftermarket companies, but the MV1 was designed from the ground up with its primary purpose in clear focus. As such, it is subjected to the same standardized crash tests required of all conventional production cars, compared with fewer, selected tests for modified wheelchair-friendly vehicles, and it comes with a 3-year, 36,000-mile warranty. A 5-year, 60,000-mile warranty covers the MV1's most important feature, a 30-inch wide ramp that extends from the vehicle's passenger side. The MV1 we sampled had the available power operated ramp, activated via buttons both inside the vehicle and on the key fob. The well illuminated ramp can deploy to either 69.5 or 92.3 inches deep, depending on user preference, and retracts into a fully enclosed pocket in the floor of the vehicle. The short ramp mode makes the incline steeper but is critical for the wheelchair user and standard handicap parking spaces, even then, there might be barely enough room for the wheelchair to turn the corner if there's a vehicle parked in the adjacent spot. A front row seat. We enlisted this author's mother, a wheelchair user who typically travels in a rear ramp Chrysler town and country converted by brawn ability, to help us test the MV1. Many converted minivans use a side ramp setup like the MV1s, but these tend to compromise the donor vehicle's structure and diminish ground clearance. Since the MV1 isn't also trying to be a minivan, its floor pan and suspension don't have to be re-engineered for wheelchair access. It offers 6 inches of ground clearance and a conveniently low step in height. Importantly, unlike many competitor vehicles, the MV1 allows the wheelchair to be secured in the shotgun position. It has been years since mom last rode in the front of a vehicle, and she greatly appreciated the view. Unfortunately, the footrest on her wheelchair interfered with the front strain floor anchors, four of which conveniently secure the wheelchair to the vehicle, such that she couldn't pull far enough forward to allow the MV1's B-pillar-mounted integral shoulder belt to fit as snugly as it should have. Belting her in with the distant C-pillar belt or raising her footrest could have remedied this, and made her crabby. But the best solution for an MV1 owner might be to fine-tune the wheelchair's orientation by installing a single-point docking station, a setup that's similar to a big rig's trailer hitch and would help ensure consistent wheelchair positioning for every journey. Conversions that allow the wheelchair user to transfer into the MV1 driver's seat also are available. It must be noted that mobility aids such as wheelchairs and scooters come in as many sizes as the humans they help. A new American car maker. Production of the MV1 began in late 2011 at an AM General facility in Indiana under the auspices of a company called Vehicle Production Group, which received $50 million from the U.S. Department of Energy around the same time that companies such as Tesla and Fisk got similar government loans. By 2013, when BPG became insolvent, AM General took over the operation and restarted production in 2014 under the Nasset Mobility Ventures brand. The company now builds about 2,000 megavolts 1S annually in the same factory that makes Mercedes-Benz R-Class SUVs for China. Fleet buyers are responsible for about 60% of MV1 sales, and most of those go to taxi companies which are wise to operate a diverse fleet. You're most likely to have seen an MV1 in a big city, and perhaps you wondered aloud, who overinflated that Honda element? Indeed, the MV1's styling is jarring, 
but its extreme boxiness enables the wide open interior that makes it possible for a wheelchair to make a 90 degree right turn to occupy the space where most vans have a standard passenger seat. There's room for a second wheelchair in the MV1's large midsection, too, but two power-operated chairs like mom's wouldn't fit at the same time. The MV1 also has a wide three-place rear bench, although its cushion is so high that some of our adult passengers couldn't touch their feet to the floor. No rear seat occupant will ever kick the back of the driver's seat, so far apart are the two rows, and it can be difficult to hear what those distant rear passengers have to say over the din of this large, boxy vehicle that lacks interior carpeting. Like a proper taxi cab. The MV1 offers an optional jump seat that can be tacked onto the back of the driver's seat. A few folding wheelchairs easily can be stashed in the 36 cubic foot cargo area, and the MV1 even has a 3,000 pound towing capacity. The MV1 starts at $40,890, not including a radio or cruise control. For a base price of $51,065, the mid-level DX, like our test vehicle, adds those basics plus the slick power ramp supplied by ASC, the company that paired with McLaren to help produce the 1980s Buick GNX. A 30-year-old Buick might seem nicer than the top of the line $58,085 MV minus 1 LX, which gets cosmetic alterations. Notice that we didn't say upgrades, such as a different grille, aluminum wheels, and foam with interior apple case. No MV1 is inexpensive, but brand new minivans converted for wheelchair compatibility generally start in the low dollar 30 comma 000 range and can exceed $60,000. Many have awkward looking styling, but even elemental cargo vans have more attractive cabins and instrument panels than the MV1s. Surely the mobility ventures MV1 would cost even more, or not exist at all, if the company didn't source many parts from other automakers. Most notably, the 3.7-liter V6 engine and the 6-speed automatic transmission come straight from Ford's parts bin circuit 2010, although the engine's output ratings match those of today's Ford Transit van. Ford also provides most of this suspension architecture as well as the interior switch gear, from the power window toggles to the steering column. Earlier MV1s used Ford's old taxi tastic 4.6-liter V8, Chevrolet contributes a Camaro differential and rear brakes from the long discontinued up under many van. The center stack, which contains few if any Ford pieces, looks particularly unfinished and haphazardly designed. The horribly outdated aftermarket radio head unit, a 7.0-inch touchscreen that brings a rudimentary navigation system for $1,095, displayed upside-down images from the backup camera on multiple occasions during our two weeks with the MV1. Keep their heads ringing. We have other complaints. The powertrain transmits an unpleasant abundance of driveline noise into the cabin. When the V6 is under load, it sounds as though the engine is about to ingest the driver's feet, although some folks thought the exhaust note sounded nicely throaty. We intended to produce a full report including performance testing data on the MV1, but a coolant hose came off at the test track and suspended our testing regimen. Suffice it to say that Mobility Ventures product is slow and loud. It's also thirsty, we averaged 15 miles per gallon over about 1,000 miles. Piloting the MV1 feels much like driving an old-school full-size van, albeit one with a longer hood. The driving position is upright and chair-like, and the seat is widely adjustable for height, unfortunately, there's no grab handle to assist the driver with ingress or egress, which seems particularly inexcusable in a vehicle designed to serve people with mobility issues. The steering feels heavy and imprecise, and the body leans and pitches precariously during even moderate cornering and braking exercises. Rough roads reveal a stiff suspension that shakes rear seat occupants in particular. The auxiliary air conditioner, mounted on the ceiling near the hatch hinges, inhibits rearward visibility, but the view in all other directions is quite good, thanks to an expansive greenhouse. The tight for its size 43-foot turning circle would enable easy parking lot maneuvering, if only the steering wheel self-centered. Keep in mind, 
though, that converted vans and minivans also possess atypical, uninspiring driving dynamics. Their supplementary ramps add mass that impedes acceleration and adversely affects ride and handling, in addition to ground clearance issues, aftermarket ramps often provide conduits to transmit noises that the original maker had tuned out. To its credit, and true to its dual purpose as a taxi cab, the body on frame MV1 tends to be notably more durable than its converted minivan rivals. Wheelchair accessible vehicles are crucial tools for many millions of Americans, and the MV1 occupies a unique place in the market. We applaud its suitability to that specific mission but wish it did a better job of giving its occupants the comfort, and at least a somewhat appealing driving experience, that those of us who don't need wheelchairs enjoy in other vehicles at this price. Price.